What's going on everyone? Today I'm going to show you how to take off the high pressure fuel pump. This is a 2006 Audi A4 2.0 turbo. Uh, so the first thing you're going to need to do is pull out the fuse for the fuel pump. On, on this car it's fuse number 28. You just pull it out, let the car run until it stalls out. That gets rid of the fuel in the line, get, lowers the pressure. The next thing you're going to do is disconnect this fuel line right here and it's a 17 and a 14 you're going to use the 14 to hold the line and the 17 to loosen it catch any remaining fuel in the line and then just set it, I set it under here, so the end of the, uh, the hose is higher than the line itself, just so it doesn't drip everywhere. The next thing we do is take off this PVC hose, you just squeeze the ends together and it should pull right off, might be a little stubborn. Then I take off this vacuum line. This is, goes to the brake booster. This is just to give us a little extra room back here. Put it under there. And then I take off this bracket right here. It's a 10 millimeter bolt holding it on. Go ahead and take it off. And there's two connectors on the high pressure fuel pump. There's one up here. And there is one down here. Disconnect both of those, get the wiring out of the way. And then I use a 13 millimeter to take off this, this bleed valve right here. Next step is removing the fuel lines. One of them is a 17, 17 millimeter. I loosen it with the long 17. Then once it's loose, I use a short stubby 17 to take it off completely. fuel dripping down there so I'm going to put a rag down there just to catch the fuel. Once that 17 is loose, I'm going to use an 8mm triple square on a long extension and bring it up behind the engine and it'll take off the banjo bolt. And once the bolt is loose, I'm going to use a magnetic tool to hold the bolt in place just so it doesn't drop. Pull the tube out of the way. We have the bolt right here. Now we need to take off the three Torx 30 bolts that hold the fuel pump on. And here is the fuel pump. And once you have the fuel pump off, 
here's a follower that needs to be replaced. It's recommended that you check it every oil change, every other oil change. If you've never checked it, I would check it right now or as soon as possible. If this wears out, it will cause damage to your fuel pump and to your camshaft. So these are the cam followers that I've taken out of my car. This first one has a giant hole in it. I took this out around 60,000 miles. I'm going to have to assume it's the original one. I replaced it with this one. Then you can see it was also wearing in that center. So I had to replace the pump and the cam the camshaft the next time I replaced it. This is why you need to replace the follower so you don't end up with a follower like that. So when you put the follower in, you want to lubricate the sides with some oil before you put it in. And then some kits come with a new o-ring. If you can get that, that's awesome. Put on a new o-ring before you put it on. And carefully slide it in there. When you're putting the pump on, they say that you're supposed to have the camshaft at the lowest point, so not at the high part of the load, but the bottom part. So if your follower is kind of sticking out a lot, uh, maybe crank the engine a little bit just to turn the crankshaft and drop that down. But if you do that, make sure the fuse is pulled out so no fuel can spray out. Then if it's all the way down, it'll be easier to compress this spring and tighten the pump back on. Then I push down a little bit on the pump just to get the bolt started. And the book says to tighten the bolts diagonally, but if you only have three bolts, I'm not sure how you can tighten something diagonally. So if you guys know how to do that, let me know. Um, I basically just tighten them down a little bit at a time so the pump doesn't go in crooked. And if you can press on the pump while tightening the bolts, it makes things go a lot quicker. And be careful not to over tighten these. Um, I did over tighten it once and I had to take the bolts out and re-thread the cylinder head. Well, it's not even the cylinder head, it's some sort of cover. I had to re-thread that so don't over tighten it. Once you have the pump tight tightened down you can go ahead and put the fuel lines back in. I'm going to try to juggle this one up. See if I can get it up there without falling. I'm just going to go ahead and tighten that down. Once that one's done, Go ahead and put this 17 back on. It's a little sliding nut. Go ahead and connect the electrical connectors back on. Go ahead and put the PVC hose back on. Actually, before you do that, don't forget the bleeder screw. And that's a 13 millimeter.
vacuum line. Now you can put this on, the PVC hose. And before I put com everything completely back together, I'm just going to connect the fuel lines and make sure there are no leaks. So if you can just use the 14 to hold the fuel line in place and then use the 17 to tighten everything down. Now you can put the fuel pump fuse back in its place and prime the pump and then start the car and make sure there are no leaks from the fuel lines back there. And if there are no leaks, you can put this bracket back on. And you're good to go. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys find this helpful. And tune in next week for more videos.